Over 90% of AI projects fail. Not because the tech sucks, but because you're chasing shiny demos and not solving real problems. If you're an executive and you're leading a company and wanna make sure your AI projects drive real ROI, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you a simple way that we've used across dozens of verticals, hundreds of projects to drive millions of dollars in revenue. So if you're tired of the hype, let's jump in. Before we start the video, I just wanna give you a quick intro on myself. My name is Francisco. I'm the head of project strategy here at AE Studio. I got a PhD in machine learning from Princeton, worked in startups, and then I'm here at AE Studio helping hundreds of founders drive millions of dollars in revenue for their businesses. AE Studio is a development, design, and machine learning agency who works with founders and executives to drive real value for their businesses. We are at the forefront of AI, both in the research sites and the product sense. If you're ready to drive real value, let's go into this. Why do most AI projects fail? It's because they're not solving the right problem. It's because they're not solving you pain. If you can find the pain points within your business and you just go and try to build something because of hype, because AI is cool, because the CFO says I should do it, because CEO and investors want me to do it, then you're doing it the wrong way. You need to put strategy first and then tech. And that's how you get started. In this video, I'll show you the pain framework. If you're not solving real pain within your business, two things will happen. At the end of the project, when you have to justify the costs, your CFO is gonna be like, Where's the ROI? Why did I spend all this money on something that doesn't work? Second reason is because after you finish your project, your people will not use this if it's not solving a pain for them. You can build the nicest product, but if it's not solving a real problem for the users, it's worthless. All right, so how do I even start, right? I have a business, I have all these problems. How do I find the right thing to solve? And this is why we came up with the pain framework. It's an acronym, so let's get to it. P for pain, AI for automation fit, I for impact, and N for necessities. And I'll go through each one. So how do I find the right place to start a project? This is really step zero. And if you skip this, your project's bound to fail. So P is for pain, the easiest one to remember. This is actually the easiest step. And it's to find the places within your workflows that really, really suck. Talk to your people, look at your own workflows and understand what sucks about my day and what sucks about the days of my employees. If you're able to find this, you have a great start. Make a list. If you can't find painful parts in your workflow, well, congratulations, you have an awesome business. But also, there's other ways to find painful places. You can look at KPIs. The first one is turnaround time or hours spent on particular workflows. If your hours spent are high, there's probably pain there. Also, error rates. If error rates are high and those errors, like in regulated industries, can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's another painful place that we can look at. Okay. So you've identified your pain points. And now you need to understand, okay, how can I use these to actually drive value, right? I wanna remove that pain, I wanna soothe that pain. And that's where we go into the next letter, A, for automation fit. This is really easy to understand. It's just going over those pain points and identifying which ones have to do with repetitive and boring tasks that happen every day and take lots of time. If you ask somebody to do something and they're like, oh, I mean, it's gonna take forever. And I just like I'm clicking through a screen and just, not using my brain, that's a perfect place. If those pain points are more related to human interaction, you better not automate those and make sure you keep training better. So yeah, look at the pain points, map out the workflows. And if those workflows are easy, repeatable, and you can train people to do this, you can most likely train an AI to do that as well. Okay, so we're going through pain. We went through P, we went through A, now we're at I, impact. Impact is actually pretty simple and it's just another word for ROI. What you have to do is go look at the things you listed out. Are they automatable? Are they painful? And now you say, hey, are they worth it? If I solve these, will this return money to me? And this can only happen in two ways. One is through increased revenue or two through increased efficiency, right? Reduce cost. So do the math. If this is something that helps many people, it's probably a high impact project. If it's something that you solve and it doesn't really impact that many people or it's something that's cheap, where it's something that's really, you know, it's painful, it's automatable, but honestly, it doesn't cost that much money and it's something we can outsource or actually it's just five minutes of my day, then it's not that much. So do the math. It might be very painful. It might be very automatable. But if it's something that just consumes five minutes of my day versus something that consumes hours, rank the things you wanna solve in terms of impact. So yeah, everything will be impactful if it's painful, and it's automatable, but you need to rank them in terms of impact with the higher star Y first. All right, so we are here at the last letter, N. N just stands in for necessities. And it's just another way to say, hey, do I have the necessary things 
to make a project happen. N can mean many different things, and it depends on your organization and the type of project. But here are some examples. Number one, you need to have clear ownership over the process of making an AI project. If you're the owner of this process, awesome. If not, find the person who owns this and convince them this is worth doing. Number two is data, which you've heard this before. It can mean many different things. In this case, let's focus on two of them. One, do I have the right processes mapped out? And do I know what a good input or a good output is if I were to design a project that automates things for me? If you have those, you're golden. And number three is legal. Are there legal roadblocks that will affect how I make this process happen? This is specifically important for projects that have to do with healthcare and finance, specifically if you're working with highly sensitive data. So take a look at that. Okay, so when we're calculating impact and calculating ROI, I understand it can be a little bit confusing how to do that, especially if you need to be able to defend this to your CFO really quickly. If you're not able to articulate ROI in less than one, two minutes, you probably chose the wrong problem. So let's get to it. When you're calculating efficiency gains and ROI, it's actually pretty straightforward. What you do is you take the total amount of time it takes somebody to do this workflow. Then you multiply that times the cost to do that, right? The hourly cost. And then when you do that is even multiply it again by how many times I or somebody has to do this. If you get all those three together and you multiply them, you get the total cost of your current manual process. Once you have this cost, what you do is you go to either an internal team or an agency and identify how much is it gonna cost me to solve this problem. If your project breaks even in under six months, congratulations, you found an awesome project. If not, you still have a great project. You might just wanna reprioritize things to find the highest impact projects first. All right, so I know all of this is very theoretical. Let's actually do some calculations. Imagine you're considering automating a document ingestion process within your business. It takes about one hour per document to ingest and put it into your system manually. And you're doing a thousand documents a month. Okay, so we can use our current framework to calculate the cost of us processing these documents. We start with the number of hours it takes to do this manually, which is one hour per document. Then we multiply that times the cost it takes us to make this happen, which let's say is $50 an hour a salary. Then we multiply that times the frequency, which is 12,000 documents a year, 1,000 per month. It takes $600,000 a year to process these documents. So you go to an agency, you go into an internal team, and you say, how much is this gonna cost? If they say, hey, it's gonna cost $250,000 to automate this, the ROI here would be massive. So when you break it down like this and look at cost, break even points, payoffs, AI projects stop being risky and actually start to make a lot of business sense. So if you wanna learn more about these frameworks and how we make sure AI projects are successful, click subscribe. We have tons of new videos coming and I'm excited to share them with you. So we've gone through pain. We've gone to how to calculate real ROI in your projects. Now let's actually go into three real life examples of projects we've worked on before with real clients. So let's go through it. This company had P for pain. It took them up to two weeks to get back to their clients with proposals, which leads us to A. The process of making these proposals was very repeatable and it was ripe for automation, which leads us to I. By decreasing the turnaround time of their proposals from two weeks to days, we calculated that their conversion rate will skyrocket, leading to increased profits, which goes to N. The problem was the company didn't have the necessary data infrastructure to aggregate all the data necessary to create a proposal. By identifying they didn't have that N, that data, two very important things happened. The first one was they didn't go into a project that wasn't possible and they saved tons of money just by not doing that. And second, is they pivoted and went to another project that was actually ultimately successful. So hey, win-win. Another project I wanna to talk to you about involves automating document ingestion, very similar to what we talked about before, so I'll be quick. We work with this company that needed to ingest invoices for multiple manufacturers into their system. This is a process that wasn't particularly painful, but it was something that was done at scale. So let's look into it. P for pain. It was painful to get these documents put into the system. People did it all the time, took a long time, but hey, it wasn't something that was really, really grueling. Number two, right, automation fit. This is what's always the same process. So it was perfect for that. This project where it shined was an impact. This wasn't something that was super painful. It was highly automatable, but it was something that was done hundreds of thousands of times per year. And lastly, in terms of N necessities, it was very clear from their side what they needed and where they needed to go. So it was perfect on that side. The outcome of having a full pain matrix is the following. We work on a project with them. It took us eight weeks and they got hundreds of thousands of dollars of ROI 
very similar to what I showed before in the previous calculation. The last example I want to talk about involves us, a studio, and a startup that we built by using this framework. We solved a very simple problem and we ended up selling this startup for more than $10 million. Okay, so what is it? What did we build? Let's actually go through it. Pain, right? It sucks to unsubscribe from subscriptions, right? You've tried it before. You have to call people. It sucks. Automation fit. It's actually really easy to unsubscribe from things. You know, you literally, the people you're calling have to press one button. Impact. We saw that we've made a system that allowed people to unsubscribe easily from their subscriptions. Subscriptions would actually go up. And then N, necessities. We had the right people, we had the right technical know-how, and we had the right relationships. In the end, we build an automatic unsubscription process where people will be able to go into their phone and directly unsubscribe from services just by writing a text message. We ended up selling this for millions and millions of dollars. So you see, doing this framework actually leads to success and lower risk, either by reducing the number of projects that you work on or by actually working on high impact projects that net you millions of dollars. Last thing I wanna talk about is, well, if I have multiple pain points, how do I rank them? How do I find the right project? Even if I have things that have all the letters of pain, it's actually pretty easy. You can do this just by simple math. For each problem that you identify, look at each letter, right? P-A-I-N. For each one of them, rank them one to five. How deep is this pain? How hurtful is this pain, right? If it's very hurtful, put a five. If it's not that much, put a one. Same for automation fit. If it's really easy to automate, put a five. If it's not, put a one. Same with impact, same with necessities. If you add up all of these numbers and you have the perfect project, you will get a score of 20. Realistically, most high ROI projects will rank somewhere between 10 and 20. If you have multiple one of these, what you do is you put them in a list, rank them according to score, and you start with the highest one. This will guarantee that you find a project that is not just a shiny AI demo, that has real value and is actually used by your customers or your internal teams. As you've seen in this video, the biggest mistake you can do when evaluating AI projects to work on is to put tech before strategy and hype before pain. You should always start with pain, go to automation fit, figure out the impact and understand what necessities you need to make this happen. This is how you find real high leverage opportunities. But here's the thing. While we're working on high impact projects for our clients, we're also working tirelessly to make sure the world is safe with AI. Here's a video of our CEO showing how AI models have learned to bypass direct instructions from their trainers and even blackmail them to avoid from being shut down. This is not sci-fi anymore. This is real life. And we're working every day to make sure that AI is safe and good for humanity.